bubble column reactors are widely used in the uh, chemical and the petrochemical process industries. And in this presentation, I would like to um, offer some insights into how bubbles rise in liquids. Let's have a look at uh, an experiment in which gas is sparged into water. And uh, you note that there are bubbles of various sizes and they appear to rise at different velocities. About 500 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci summarized his observations on how uh, air bubbles lie, rise in a liquid. He talks about sinuous motions of a single bubble rising in water. And in um, one of his drawings, he draws the motion of the liquid in this manner. 500 years after the uh, observation of Leonardo da Vinci, we performed uh, computational fluid dynamics uh, simulations to uh, determine how a single bubble rises in water. Let's first look at uh, a four millimeter bubble and we see a clear indication of the sinuous motion referred to by uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Let's look at a five millimeter bubble. Similar, but not exactly the same. Also moves up, follows following a um, sinuous pass. It's a nine millimeter bubble. appears to be flapping its wings and uh, is unstable and breaks up. A 12 millimeter bubble has the motion of a, of a bird flapping its wings as it rises through the liquid. This is a 20 millimeter bubble. It uh, sheds off its uh, edges and rises straight up. So there's a huge difference between a four millimeter bubble and a 20 millimeter bubble. And in a bubble column, we have a combination of uh, various sizes ranging from four millimeters to about uh, maybe even 30 millimeters. Let's do another computational experiment. We take a single bubble of 32 millimeters in size and place it in columns of two different diameters, a 5.1 centimeter diameter column and a 30 centimeter diameter column. And let's have a look at how fast the, a single bubble of the same size rise in these two columns of different dimensions. We note that the uh, bubble of 32 millimeters rises faster in a um, 30 centimeter column than it does in a uh, five centimeter column. This is because uh, of the wall effects that tends to exert a drag on the bubbles, whereas a, a single bubble in a very large diameter column is free from um, wall effects. Now these wall effects or lack thereof needs to be taken into account in scaling up uh, bubble column reactors because in practice the bubble column reactors could have dimensions um, that range up to, say, 
20 meters in diameter and 40 meters in height. This um, photograph gives you an indication of the size of the bubble columns that are commonly uh, built and operated in the uh, chemical process industries. Here's a bubble column slurry reactor whose uh, dimensions uh, you can uh, determine for yourself because this is a super tanker that transports the bubble columns from the uh, shipyard in Japan to a location in the Middle East. Here's another photograph of the bubble column slurry reactor being installed in Qatar. The reactor dimensions are dictated by the uh, lifting capacity of the cranes used on the construction site. Let's uh, perform another computational experiment in which two bubbles, each of 3.1 centimeter diameter, are placed in a column filled with water and the column diameter is 5 centimeters. The CFD simulations are carried out assuming um, axial symmetry and you see only one half of the uh, column being um, displayed. Let's see how the bubbles rise. You will note that the uh, trailing bubble has caught up with the uh, leading bubble. In other words, even though the diameters of the two bubbles are the same, the trailing bubble rises faster than the leading bubble. Now these are computational fluid dynamics simulations. Let's uh, see if uh, experiments show the same. I do experiments in uh, two different columns, two different diameters. In each case, we have uh, two bubbles of the same diameter placed one below the other. Let's have a look. You can see clearly, once more, that the trailing bubble catches up with the leading bubble and uh, coalesces. The explanation is as follows. The leading bubble has a wake which draws in the uh, trailing bubble and the trailing bubble gets accelerated. This acceleration of the trailing bubble due to wake interactions is uh, exploited by cyclists in the Tour de France. It makes sense to uh, not be the leader of the pack, but to follow the leader so that you can benefit from the uh, um, wake that is uh, created below or be, um, behind the uh, leading cyclists. And that wake helps to accelerate the motion of the uh, trailing cyclists. Only right near the finish line does the uh, trailing cyclist then attempt to overtake the leading cyclist. This is a very common phenomenon and the explanation lies in the wake interactions.